Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, first, I would like to thank the Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition for raising this matter. I've been in a quandary, as you might imagine, Mr. Speaker, unable to imagine exactly how I would put to you the various ways in which I feel my rights are being infringed by this turn of events with the Finance Committee. I would li like to reserve the ability to work, to put my arguments together for you, Mr. Speaker, to present them tomorrow. And I turn to you, as in your own words, in your ruling on the matter raised by the Member of Parliament for Langley, your ruling in April that is the, uh, quote, the unquestionable duty of the Speaker to act as the guardian of the rights and privileges of members and of the House as an institution, Mr. Speaker. Those are your words. And I turn to you as the guardian of my rights and ask that I be allowed the right to present my response to the excellent point of order of the uh, House Leader of the Official Opposition tomorrow. Uh, the Honourable Government House Leader. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I'll say uh, at the outset I'm uh, bewildered but not entirely surprised. I suppose that uh, some of the independent members whose rights you sought to protect and who the committee sought a process to protect are now complaining of that. But uh, that is a paradox in itself. I only wanted to rise at this point to respond immediately to two very narrow things. One, uh, my surprise at the uh, Liberal Deputy House Leader's position because it is entirely contrary to the position his party took at committee uh, where the Liberal finance critic said that he liked the comment of the uh, Parliamentary Secretary's uh, uh, comments welcoming the independence to the committee because uh, the Liberals welcome the input of the independent members at that stage of their deliberations at committee. So uh, that view is a, a little bit different. The other point I wanted to make address just very quickly was his concern that the problem with this process is that in the invitation to the independent members to participate, there was a deadline for them to submit amendments. Well, guess what? There's a deadline for every member of the committee of all the parties to submit amendments. They are all constrained in exactly the same fashion. So there is no discrimination. There is no disadvantage to the independent members in that regard. So that argument is entirely without uh, any foundation. As I said, I may come back with more. Thank you.